All right, guys, I'm gonna show you a video we put together about one of the coolest stunt slash formation flights I've ever done. So this is the flight with Draco with wingsuits. So before I get into that video, I've never done a precursor to a video that says, don't try this. Um, I'm gonna take Draco and I'm gonna fly it with it in full reverse and if you went through flight training, flight school, or talked to instructors, don't do it. There's lots of reasons you don't want to fly a plane in reverse. Reverse on a turboprop can be done. The blade stays rotating in the same direction, but you can pitch the blades the opposite way. So though they're spinning in one way, you reverse it, get forward thrust. It is normal. I had someone say you can't put your airplane in reverse in flight because it will destroy the motor. That's not accurate. The aircraft can actually go in reverse, but you might destroy the airplane. You might actually take the tail of the airplane and throw it over the front. So there's lots of variables in this. Yes, you could hurt something. The motor's not part of it. Also, it has to do with the speed you're traveling. Yes, if I took my race plane and I was doing 400 miles an hour and I stuck it in reverse and jammed it, yeah, I might hurt the motor, I might hurt the airframe. I'm not doing that in Draco in this next video. So, the rumor that you will hurt a turboprop putting it in reverse in the air, partially true. At speeds similar to a touchdown, you can't hurt it. If you super exceed that, now you start to add an additional load. So I want, I want you to notice something. In the video, I actually go up to altitude, I practice it with a parachute on, and I find the level of how much reverse can I do where I maybe have a little mushroom blanking part of the tail or a lot of the tail. And I had to play with that a lot before we did the actual stunt. What I found to get to work with wingsuits is I actually have the plane almost about 80% up elevator because so much of the air coming off my propeller in reverse is so disrupted that normally this is flight attitude. If I were to do this, the plane would be abruptly changing to an up direction. If I pause the video, you can see my elevators in this position and I'm pointing down, aggressively down. What's actually happened is I've lost most of my elevator, but this top edge is just outside the mushroom cloud, so I'm actually tickling the clean air. Yes, you can put a plane not in reverse, not hurt the engine under a certain airspeed. And it is unstable and challenging and some airframes can't do it. So don't throw your plane in reverse, but maybe you can watch <laughs> me do it. We wanted to figure out how to jump, pull out of one aircraft, come down and pair up with Draco, transition into paired speeds, and then grab onto the wingtips of my airplane. Now, it sounds easy, but it was a pain in the butt and it took a lot of work. So we're going to talk about how we made this happen. All right, guys. So I've had a lot of people ask me about this stunt we put together and uh, go back to Oshkosh this last year. And I had just finished Draco. First thing that happens after doing the stole competitions at Oshkosh is I had a bunch of my friends show up telling me, oh my gosh, Draco's awesome. I had a really good friend come on and says, we gotta do something really cool with that plane. I think it might be able to do something we've been trying to do in the parachuting world and the wingsuit world. We just have never accomplished and we think Draco might make it happen. So that was Scott Palmer. <laughs> Scott is a stud. Scott um, has done some stunts for videos and movies. We actually at first on set thought it might be impossible. There's a lot of math that went into this and there was a lot of prep and a lot of training and safety briefing. We actually got the FA involved before we even tried it. We set up safety jump zones, safety teams, safety parameters. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the problems of pulling off a stunt, of having a whole bunch of wingsuits to grab onto the wing of an aircraft. So for starters, let's get an airplane up here and let's have another airplane being Draco, and let's have people jump out of this one and then grab onto the wing of this one. So we started playing with basic math. 
We quickly realized simply that one aircraft would start lower than the other. And we jumped from this ship and try and pair to this ship. Here's the problem. We first started with a King Air parachute jump ship and Draco. And we tried this at one speed and this at a paired speed. It doesn't work. The guys jump out of this plane and as soon as he jumps out, the wind hits him and he goes this way. <laughs> and I fly by him. We knew that would happen, so we staged the back. So for right off the bat, we said, let's do some basic math on our first day of jumps. Let's get Draco and find all its flying limitations. How fast can I dive? What if I'm at idle? What if I'm at partial power? What if I'm at partial flaps, full flaps, partial rudder, a slip, a wing over? Here's what Draco can do in a dive in every phase of flight without ripping the wings off the airplane and passing V and E. So we got all this data and we crunched it. Then we said, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have the wingsuit guys jump and we wanna know when they open up and they stretch their arms as far forward as they can and they get as big as they can, how slow can they get their descent rate? So they open up, and this is a great big squirrel shape and hands and little feet, and they're opened up. And how slow can we get this descent rate? And then, if we point the body downhill, how fast can we get its descent rate? There's two other numbers. How fast in forward speed, and then how slow forward we can travel, and where they blend. So really, <laughs> What we learned very fast, that wingsuits really do fly, but in the world of aviation, they more like fall quickly in a board-like motion. <laughs> Their sinking rate exceeded the max sink rate of any plane we could pair up with it. And so we couldn't get the two to meet. You could do lots of flybys. So what happened is we could bring Draco way lower in elevation and drop it way down here and get this plane way ahead and they'd jump out and the wind would hit them and they'd fly this way backwards as the wind hit them. Draco would start into a steep dive downhill and we did a whole bunch of and there he goes. <laughs> we weren't even close. Like, they are so dissimilar formation, it's insane. And we learned very quickly that we need the wingsuits opened up as big as possible, stretching their arms way forward, way tight, getting as big as they can. And we want them to stay at about 85 miles per hour. And we want them to sink at less than 3,500 feet per minute. Problem is, Aircraft, if you want them to sink at 3,500 feet per minute, their airspeed is 120 to 200, or wings depart the aircraft. <laughs> so you're so far, if you dive to hit this descent rate, your airspeed gains even if the engine is in idle or essentially off. The airplane can hit 3,500 feet per minute, but not at 85 miles an hour. They cannot pair. So we kept trying full flaps, full idle, different speeds all day long. We couldn't do it. It was called off. You could actually get a wingsuit to dive and gain enough speed and approach an aircraft, but it wasn't a stabilized, one's going faster than the other. We wanted them to be exactly the same. The goal was to fly the most dissimilar flying machine in the world in formation. And it just doesn't look like it's gonna work. Came back, I said, you know what, I'm gonna try something with Draco I've never done before. I had this wild idea, I basically just told the boys, you know what, I'm gonna try something. So I put on my parachute and I had this theory. What if I put the airplane in reverse? Now, on a turboprop, this is a really bad idea. <laughs> On any aircraft, let me tell you what happens when you put the plane in reverse. Reverse is capable on Draco, it's a turboprop. The blade stays spinning in one direction, but you can actually take the pitch and rotate it opposite. So even though the blade stays going this direction, 
I change the pitch, and reverse is used for stopping only, never in flight. It's used for when you land, you throw it in reverse so you can get to a stop. That's what it's for. So as far as the ability for the engine and airframe to handle reverse, do it all the time. Every time we land, we pitch it in reverse, throw all the thrust back. However, there's something that happens when you put it in reverse. The air that used to be putting straight back on the tail of the aircraft, and it's nice and clean over your horizontal, your rudder, all your control surfaces are nice and smooth. That air coming off those blades going back is great. Pitch the blades the other way, the air is now pushing forward. And what that does is it takes the air to push forward in reverse and it makes a giant mushroom of disrupted air going the wrong direction, which means it's no longer coming back across your elevator or your rudder to keep your flying control surfaces working. So my theory was this. And I go up high enough, put my plane in a dive, put it into reverse so that I can go an even steeper dive, meet the 3,500 foot sink rate without exceeding my 85 mile an hour carrying speed to the wingsuits. I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna put the plane in a dive. I'm gonna try not to exceed 85 miles an hour in forward speed, but I need to hit 3,500 foot per minute sink. So I got up and I baby stepped into it. Pointed the plane down, slowed it down, dirtied it up, put out the flaps, got it as dirty as I could to keep the plane slow. Nose it over steeper and steeper, started to approach 80, 85 miles an hour, it's gonna run away. I'm nowhere near 3,500 foot per minute sink rate. Take the engine, pull it over the gate, click it into reverse. I baby stepped into it, I first hit it. You feel yourself go way forward into the seat because you're already diving downhill. And then I started giving more power and increasing the horsepower of that reverse. And that's when the control starts to shake. My feet are needing to move twice as much on the rudder. And then the elevator lets go. What's really happened is the mushroom cloud, the more I added power, the bigger the mushroom going the wrong direction in front of the plane, enveloped out and then blanked my tail. When that happened, all of a sudden I lose control of the tail. No problem. What's nice is when that would happen, I could quickly bring the power back forward and instantly put the air back over my tail and correct any abnormal movements in the aircraft. So what I did for the next two hours is I just played with the sequence of airspeed to dive, transition to reverse, and then how much power I put at those transitions to try and get smoothly into 85 miles an hour, 3,500 foot sink rate, with all my controls stabilized. That's what I practiced, and I went over and over and over and over till I hit it 100% of the time. Now was, let's see if it, we can actually pull it off. We move out to Mount Timpanogos range. We set up a couple of jump zones, and our first jump was not to accomplish anything other than can we do it really far apart but in the speeds we need. enough that we knew we could start bringing it closer. Then we moved everybody closer step by step. So this was a long process. And I tell you what, to have some of the greatest wingsuit pilots in the world paired up next to me in Draco, my dream build, which I had just barely finished, flying it in reverse. the top of your wing visually <laughs> I was just like oh my we did some more calculations and I found one of the harder items was 
the King Air's speed and trying to do a convergence of a jumping person out and pairing with Draco has such a, a fine line between possible and not possible, we decided to change jump ships. So though we started with a King Air, we moved to helicopters. I had a wingsuit. I'm looking at my buddy's face four feet away from me out my window right there, upside down, staring at me. Another guy over here, another guy up here. I'm watching them inch towards my wing and I'm looking one side, the other side. I'm trying to hold everything steady. I'm as serious as I can possibly be on the outside. But on the inside, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're grabbing my wing. They're gonna get there, they're almost there. It's eight inches, six inches, and then, holy crap, I'm telling you, I actually felt them grab my wing. Their hand is just out of view, it's up on top, but I felt the aircraft move as they got a hold of it out there. And then when the second one came in and docked on the other side, and we are flying in formation, two guys holding on to Draco, while it's in a dive, in reverse, to make it happen. That was the coolest thing I've ever done. All of you that helped, GoPro for helping us out with it, Marshall Miller, Scott Palmer, the Gallons, my twin brother, Mark Patey, and you know what? They're all racking their brains. We're putting ideas together. We got some more coming. So I hope you like, follow along. We're gonna get helicopters, wingsuits, Draco, Scrappy and we're gonna put them all together and do some really, really fun things with aviation. <laughs> <laughs>